Uh, Biden backdoors Israel in the UN, rescinding Trump's recognition of sovereignty over the Golan. In a move from the Obama playbook, the U.S. is advancing a stealth agenda in the Middle East at the expense of its allies. You know, what's interesting is my, my, my Jewish friend and I discussing this morning uh, Genesis, I'll bless those who bless you, I'll curse those you, who curse you. We were talking about BDS, boycott, divestment, sanctions, the rise of anti-Semitism, and I had to apologize to my Israeli Jewish friend for the way this administration is behaving against mm. Israel. Dr. Woods? Yeah, uh, so true. Um, that article is interesting. It deals with um, several United Nations resolutions, which is basically reversing the Trump era policies, you know, uh, not, for example, the administration not wanting to do scientific cooperation with Israelis living within the so called occupied territories, um, reversing language that the Golan Heights, which is that uh, northern mountainous area that separates Israel proper from Syria which is a big deal because the big three, Russia, Iran, and Turkey, you know, now have a presence in Syria. And what separates them from Israel, from Syria, is the Golan Heights. Now you have language in the Biden administration that the Golan Heights does not really belong to the Israelis, whereas Trump had allowed, you know, uh, annexation or recognized Jewish uh, sovereignty over the Golan Heights. So all of this stuff and that article brings it out is sort of being done backdoor, no congressional oversight. And most of the American people doesn't even know this is happening, but our country, you know, is moving in a direction, I believe that's more and more hostile towards Israel. In fact, Biden in his recent speech to the United Nations and Brandon, you might have the email that I sent you wrongly um i sent you last week's stuff uh in my first email to you i tried to correct it with a second email but um as i noticed the article that you're reading from is last week's stack of stuff but i thought it sounded familiar yeah I and mean, it's worth going over again if you want no but not really have <laughs> <laughs> we been there done that yeah there's another more recent article and it's dealing with biden's speech to the un and here's what biden said he said it demonstrates, this is a direct quote, it demonstrates how Israel's greater normalization and economic connections with its neighbors is delivering a positive and, and practical impacts, even as we continue to work tirelessly to support a just and, and lasting peace between Israeli and the Palestinians. Here comes the big line, two states for two people, close quote. So the two-state solution is on the table. Um, and what they mean by the two-state solution is Israel needs to give up Judea and Samaria, you know, to some kind of international zone or maybe the Palestinians. And that's supposed to broker peace in the region, which is an idea that's absolutely insane because we have a two-state solution in what's called the Gaza Strip there in the southwest portion of the nation that tiny strip there on the Mediterranean that was given back to the Palestinians in 2005, where they had one and only one election and they elected Hamas and the Gaza Strip has now become a beachhead for rocket attack after rocket attack into the land of Israel. And it's become a beachhead for uh, building tunnels of terror as they're called into the land of Israel. Boy, the two-state solution is not working too well, is it, with the Gaza Strip? So why in the world would any right-minded person think that the two-state solution is going to work if they give up something even much bigger, which would reduce Israel's width by less than 10 miles? They call it the West Bank. I prefer to call it Judea and Samaria because that's what the Bible calls it. Mm. But So there's the uh, headline right there. Where is it? Right No, right here. Uh, Biden Israeli normalization delivering results amid tireless two state solution push. Let's go to this next one. UN chief warns of gates of hell in climate summit, but carbon polluting nations stay silent. So we've moved from uh, Israel to the climate uh, boogeyman, 
climate change, yeah. everyone's global warming, and then as things cool, they just switch it to climate change. So even when we get really cold weather, that's because of, of man-made um, climate catastrophe that we've done. So I heard this speech. I listened to this guy. He's a yeah. Marxist. He's a Marxist, by the way. Yeah, well, Biden, you know, it's amazing in his speech. It's like, I mean, obviously the guy's an empty vessel. I don't know what he knows. I don't know what he understands. Well, you know, he gave the same story twice yesterday, minutes apart, almost word for word. Yeah, and this kind of thing is happening regularly. I remember when uh, Nancy Reagan finished one of Ronald Reagan's sentences one time when they were at their ranch in California, the media just went crazy. How could we elect a senile old man to the office of the presidency? Well, the same left is now promoting Joe Biden. I mean, it's just un- unbelievable to me, the hypocrisy. But in his UN speech, he kept saying globalism, 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 over and over again. He keeps saying, you know, we're finished with unilateralism, the Lone Ranger approach, we're moving to mul- multilateralism. He kept promoting the institutions of the United Nations that are going to bring in this uh, nirvana or peace, I guess, that he's envisioning. And at the end of the speech, he he says climate change, climate, 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 you know, over and over again. So between the issue of COVID, you know, the mandemic or the pandemic, and the issue of the climate, in fact, Klaus Schwab's daughter, we've covered it, a video surfaced of her you know, not long ago, where she, I think she, she gave this talk uh, back in 2020, but the video, we became aware of it recently, where she basically said, what we're doing with uh, uh, COVID, we're going to do with climate. So the same excuse to put the planet under lockdown for COVID, we're going to do the same thing with climate emergencies. And so that's why Biden keeps talking about the climate all of the time. It's like a pretext <laughs> for um, planet lockdown. And here is this guy that you're talking about, this UN chief, talking about how the using using words that you would normally hear from a fundamentalist preacher, you know, the gates of hell. You know, it shows you how religious these people are with this issue of climate. Indeed. If we if we don't go into planet lockdown, the gates of hell are going to break loose. And as the article points out, the number one polluters of the climate. Um, in terms of uh, heat trapping gases and all these things that they're supposedly worried about, they weren't even present. I mean, China wasn't present. So obviously the name of the game here is not to fix so-called anthropogenic climate change. It's to come up with a pretext for global wealth redistribution. Absolutely. And and that's what we're being hurled into. And uh, the prophet Daniel saw this coming. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, where he said, you know, the whole world would be trampled down by a form of world government that would be in full swing by the time Jesus returned and overthrew it and touched down on planet Earth. And and that's what we're moving into. I mean, you can't even get through a speech today from a major world leader from any political party without them saying global over and over again, climate over and over again and uh biden uh recently to the un just just replicated that that model indeed he did and we now have uh joe biden announcing climate core will train thousands of young people okay now <clears throat> folks this is this is again where my book grave influence comes in that i wrote in 2008 and it came out in 2009 And in that book and in this radio show and on this radio show and on TV, I have talked extensively about the globalist plan, the Obama plan as well, to push children through a UN styled, excuse me, a Nazi styled brown shirt, uh, social justice training program, AmeriCorps, different names. I've shown you the screenshots where they openly say they're gonna teach them globalism where they're going to teach them social justice. So please do not fall for this masking of this program to be about climate change. It has zero to do with climate change. Zero. 
This is simply the buzzword to mask and camouflage $10 billion program to put children through a brainwashing program and turn them in to little Nazi brown shirts under the guise of community service. Now, don't forget the March 2020 document by the commission put together by Barack Obama and John McCain <clears throat> that recommended to Congress drafting America's daughters. It also recommended setting up a program by which children would have to do so many hours of community service to get out of high school. And they said they would make it mandatory onto homeschoolers in the program. Then if you want to go beyond that, you can join and get housing, a stipend, pay for your education, and go on and do more. So let's go over to this website right here. <clears throat> this is Sunrise Movement. I'm, I'll be getting into this in more detail in my Sunday morning program, Worldview Report Sunday, along with other topics. The Civilian Climate Corps. Now, notice the date. The date of this, and I don't know how many of you know about the Sunrise Movement, but this is a radical, radical group, okay? Radical group. But notice the date of the article. April 20th, 2021. What were they calling for? The Civilian Climate Corps. Here we are, September 22nd, 2023, and this week, <clears throat> Biden calls for the Climate Corps $10 billion. So you need $10 billion to help young people go around with plastic bags, orange plastic bags or yellow plastic bags, as we often see on the side of the interstate, and pick up garbage. And you need $10 billion to buy some plastic bags and some vests uh, and hire a few people in some trucks to take kids out and collect garbage. And, and, and clean up the environment. You need 10 billion? Folks, how dumb do they think we are? How dumb do they think we are? This is a $10 billion program to turn American children into little Nazi brown shirts because they're going to need more policing of the American people. And they're going to need policing, particularly against a certain group of people, which is why you're extremely radical Sunrise movement is behind this. Let's not forget what Larry Grothwell told us when he penetrated the weather underground, because these are the same people. They just went from being radicals outside government to being radicals inside the government. And he said, when the revolution is finally complete, we will have to set up education camps, re-educate people. And I think they said that uh, about 25 million of them cannot be re-educated, so we will have to dispose of them. Their big, their big hurdle was, what are we going to do with all the bodies? Now, when you have these very same ideolog ideologically aligned individuals, like the Sunrise Movement, calling two years ago for this kind of core Understand what it is. This is a Marxist core or a socialist fascist core. It matters not. We'll be right back. Radical anarchists plot a full-blown coup, complete with bloodshed. Okay? This is a radical group, and now they're going to get and work with Joe Biden for $10 billion under the guise of the New Green Deal, climate change, but don't fool yourself they are setting up a paramilitary type group for policing. And whenever the Marxists want to set up a training program for young people to be turned into radical police, you better take note, Dr. Woods. And this is actually, the name is co-opted from uh, FDR's New Deal. Mm -hmm. FDR had his civilian uh, conservation corps. So they're just switching the vocabulary around a little bit. This is going to be a, what they call it, you know, climate core. But every dictator in world history, you know, that I know of always had some kind of, you know, police within the police. I think you called it a paramilitary group or you use language like that. Yep. I mean, that's, that's what the brown shirts were. And this is preparatory for that. 
And uh, these these leftists have always targeted the young. I mean, you you reported probably years ago on the Bill Clinton's uh, remember the governor's school that Bill Clinton had. We reported he, on that in my second book in 1995. Yeah, and so he picked off the best and the brightest, and kind of like Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, you know, mm -hmm. picking off the best and the brightest, brought them under his custody for a period of time to brainwash him. Klaus Schwab, you know, you covered his leadership school uh, where all the people that are pulling the levers of power today, Gavin Newsom, um, you can trace their background back to Klaus Schwab's leadership school. And now the ante has been upped as far as I can tell as they're going after a new group of young people um, to be part of this, uh, you know, climate, uh, climate, conservation conservation corps or whatever they're calling it i mean this is this is nothing more than a, a, a an auxiliary group of brown shirts to do the left's bidding yep um when the masses when the when the natives get restless let's just put it that way yep and we'll cover this more over the weekend on the worldview report sunday <clears throat> it's it's really shocking but we'll just keep going uh, our next item up here, Dr. Woods, is, let's see, what is our next item? Let me go to our sheet here and download the next item. What, you go ahead and tell me what it is while I grab it, will you? Yeah, well, it's, it's cashless. Okay. And um, here's an important article about the G20. Announces plans to impose digital currencies and IDs worldwide. So... You know, we've been warning about CBDCs. People have been saying, oh, that's just conspiracy theory. That's just conspiracy talk. Well, uh, nonsense. Um, according to this article, the group of 20 leaders have agreed to plan to eventually impose digital currencies and digital IDs on their respective populations. Despite fears that governments will use them to monitor people's spending and crush, you know, deceit. Um, the article says many critics are concerned that governments and central banks will eventually regulate cryptocurrencies and then immediately replace them with CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, which lack similar privacy concerns. And the article goes on talking about leader after leader after leader within the G20 that think these CBDCs are the best thing since sliced bread and they can't wait to implement these worldwide and they had a whole conference to talk about it. So there you go. Let's go to cultural Marxism. New York City to consider removing statues of George Washington, create uh, reparation, reparations task force amid budget cuts. Yeah, um, let's go after George Washington. Let's go after Christopher Columbus, New York City. And keep in mind that this is the same crowd back in 2021 that took the statue of Thomas Jefferson, which was in the New York City Council uh, meeting room and remove it. You know, I mean, what do George Washington, Christopher Columbus, and Thomas Jefferson have in common? Well, they represent the foundations of what we have today, freedom in America. And Psalm 11 and verse three says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So now New York City is, you know, eliminating those statues. They have put in together, a, put together a task force in terms of how to bring in reparations. And we know what reparations are. Reparations is just code speak for uh, redistribution of wealth and so this is the direction that New York City you know has decided to to go in it's right out of the Antonio Gramsci playbook that the way to topple a civilization is to change its values from within and one of the ways you change a, a society from within is you change its history or make people ignorant of its history Karl Marx himself said of people that do not know their history, you know, are easily persuaded. And um, you can track this uh, historical revisionism 
right into the days of Josiah. That's how fast a nation can lose sight of its history, where the nation of Israel decided to do some temple repairs. And lo and behold, what did they find in the temple? This strange book called the Book of the Law. <laughs> and they opened it up, you know, the Book of Deuteronomy and the Mosaic Law, and they realized how far they were away from God's covenant and the nation in the days of Josiah repented. But um, it shows you that story there, that historical account in scripture, how fast this can happen, how a nation can lose sight of its history. And uh, it's, it's sort of spooky today to talk to young people and just ask them some basic questions about separation of powers, the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment, you know, George Washington. I mean, a lot of them don't even know who Adolf Hitler was, I'm discovering. Uh, when I was coming of age to the school system, I'm a product of public schools. Everybody knew who Hitler was. Uh, today, talk to someone young and ask them what they know about Adolf Hitler. And frequently what you're gonna find is they don't know anything about him. And so what's happening is our history is being lost. And this is part of the Marxist design for America because it makes us more susceptible and receptive to a Marxist takeover because our values have been changed from within. And Gramsci, wherever he is now, probably in hell somewhere, uh, is probably, if he's capable of it at least, smiling because his cultural Marxism is working so well in the United States. Yeah, sadly it is. Sadly it is. All right, let's get ready up with the phone lines. 1-800-347-9829. one 347 9829 nine eight two nine dr woods i want to go back to the story that i started with from the sun uh putin's feared black sea fleet headquarters is blown up by brit storm shadow missile and massive fiery blitz on occupied <laughs> crimea um i'm gonna read a little bit from the article here real quick uh let's see here uh, i wanted to get to the part about britain if there's anything in here about that I don't guess I see too much more about that. That was a, pretty much all, all there is. Um, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, do you agree that it seems as though this administration in America and Great Britain and NATO are doing everything they can to push us into war? Yeah, I mean, if, if they're trying to stop this, it's, they sure go about it in a strange way. I mean, this uh, Zelensky, I can't. He, he runs around and acts like his country's not at war. I don't understand what the guy's doing at all. Um, so it's almost if it's almost as if it's one of those follow the money type of things. Oh yes, that this war is actually good for a lot of people, and so people want this war. Uh, obviously, the situation there, Russia, the Ukraine, is not improving. <laughs> it's obviously spiraling out of control. And I just want to remind people that this Russia. Uh, movement into the Ukraine did not happen under Donald Trump's watch. You know, they, they specifically waited till he was out of the way. And in fact, is as corrupt as our last election cycle was, I would argue that these international forces probably uh, put a lot of wheels in motion to make sure Trump would be out of the way. But yes. Uh, because they know, knew that this moment in time would arise. So something really bizarre is going on and the price tag of the whole thing you mentioned it at the top of our show is going to be our children and grandchildren they're the ones that are going to have to pay the price for this uh i know that rupert murdoch is stepping down his son's taking over it'll go even more left than it is now but they interviewed an author the other day lee smith author of the book the permanent coup and the headline on the tv headline on the TV, which I think I might have here, the headline on the TV, I snapped a picture of it as I walked through the room, because I don't really watch Fox News. But as I walked through the room, I saw the headline, and here it is, the headline. CIA let China interfere in 2020 election. Well, you know, this is what we've been saying, that China was messing around in the election, and we've been talking about the CIA being a part of it. We've quoted Congressman Bill Posey of Florida saying in a, Jan a December 10th, 2020 letter to the CIA director then and the Inspector General of the CIA that there needs to be an investigation between the connection of the CIA, between the CIA and these voting machine companies. 
I don't know what's gotten to Fox News that they want to report that the CIA let China interfere in the 2020 election. Uh, I, I think that's absolutely true. I think the CIA let it happen and encouraged it and set it up so they could have plausible deniability. But it goes to your point about making sure that Trump did not win so that our government can get us into a war, launder this money, billions through the Ukraine, the organ trafficking. Um, I don't know if you've seen the recent reports and videos of organ trafficking of children there in Ukraine. Um, again, this is why I set out, it was not picking a side. Everybody was running, Ukraine, where are the colors Ukraine? And I'm like, okay, do you guys not understand the Hegelian dialectic process? Do you not understand how this stuff works? You have to have a thesis and an antithesis, a good guy so-called, a bad guy so-called, and then you confuse everybody. Well, what if they're all bad? What if they're all World Economic Forum stooges? What if they're all globalist stooges being used like a big play on a stage to manipulate people? And at the end of the day, it's all to bring down, in part, America. And what have they done? They've drained our treasury. <coughs> They've drained our armament, our military supplies. They've weakened America on the world stage. And now, whether they're really going against Putin or whether Putin is involved in this as a, as a, as a stage setting, what they've done is set the scenario for terrorist attacks in the U.S. or nuclear strikes in the U.S., even if they want to blame them on Russia, maybe it will be, or it's now just set the narrative for the deep state to carry out a nuclear 9-11 that they carry out. I mean, it's a mess. Your thoughts, folks? 1-800-848-9222.